multiplying binomials. And when we're multiplying binomials, the main important thing you guys want to make sure you guys can do here is um, remember that anytime you have anything squared, it's that expression multiplied by itself. So therefore, this is 3 times the square root of 2 minus 2 times the square root of 3 times 3 square root of 2 minus 2 square root of 3. Right? You have to multiply it by itself. You cannot just like distribute that square across a binomial. Just got to be very, very careful with that. So now we need to apply FOIL. Now, for in this case, usually I like to do things a little bit quicker. But um, if you guys remember, a lot of times we, I, this is going to maybe take a little bit of math. So I'm going to break this up using the FOIL method. Remember, FOIL basically stands for first. So the first terms in each one. So I need to multiply those. So I'm going to multiply 3 square root of 2 times 3 square root of 2. Well, if I remember my multiplying, 3 times 3 is going to be 9. And then that's going to be the square root of 2 squared, right? Yes? Or do you guys need me to show that? Or is that OK? Square root of 2 squared, which is 2, which equals 18. Then the next one in FOIL is the outer. So now you pick the two outer terms and multiply them. So now I have 3 square root of 2 times negative 2 square root of 3. Again, multiplying, you just multiply your outer terms and then multiply your two radicands as long as the index is the same. So 3 times negative 2 is going to be a negative 6. Um, 2 times square root of 3 is square root of 6. Then the next one in FOIL is your inner. So to multiply my inner, I do negative 2 square root of 3 times 3 square root of 2. So that gives me a negative 6 square root of 6. And then the last one is last. You don't have to do this long FOIL method if you want to use the box method or if you, have a, or if you want to do another way to quicker FOIL. You can do that as well. But just for teaching purposes, I'm just going to do it a little bit slower. So that's negative 2 to the square root of 3 times negative 2 square root of 3. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. And then negative, or sorry, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is just 3, which equals 12. Now, these are my answers. So I'm going to write them out as one expression. So 18 minus 6 square root of 6 minus 6 square root of 6 plus 12. Okay. Now, first of all, let's just make sure we can subtract these. Can I subtract negative 6 square root of 6 from 6 square root of 6? Do we have the index and the radicand are exactly the same? Yes. yes. Okay, so guess what? We can apply this operation. And guess what? For majority of these, that's what you're going to be able to do. So anyways, if you owe me, let's forget about the radical 6, because we know that's going to remain the same. If you owe me $6 and you borrow 6 more dollars, do you still owe me money? Yes, you now owe me $12. And remember, just like if these, just treat these like a variable. These don't change. And then you have 18 plus 12 is going to be 30. So your final answer is 30 minus 12 radical 6. That's your final answer. OK? And that's it. Done. Is this how all the subtraction is going on? Is all the what?